videos. It's that medium where we still think when we see it, I think most of us at least, yeah, that's real. And even though we all know that AI has come a long way, I think so far video really has been something where most people would think, yeah, that's probably still real. But just yesterday, OpenAI published a new tool called Sora. And Sora is really interesting because it's generated video. It generates video from textual descriptions. I will link everything from, uh, from below. But just to give you a couple of examples what Sora can do, I think it's really fascinating. And mostly from my point of view as a video creator, I work with video a lot, I produce it. And for you as a video consumer and maybe also creator, right? The video world may change a fair bit and not too long from now, probably. So there were some first ideas around generating video a little while ago, which always looked really crude and clearly not like the real thing, but this is really different now. So let's look at the first example that I have here, which is a prompt that says a stylish woman walks down a Tokyo street filled with warm glowing neon and animated city signage. And then it goes on a little further. And as you can see, it looks really nice. If you look closer, you do see some things looking not quite right. So if we zoom in on the feed, for example, in some parts of the video, it looks like the woman is kind of sliding to the side, which looks odd. But by and large, if you look at the video, it, it looks pretty realistic. And that's already so much better than pretty much anything that we've seen before in the generated video space. Let's look at a second example. This one here um, looks like a BBC documentary, I guess, right? And this one is uh, several giant woolly mammoths approach treading through a snowy meadow. Their long woolly fur lightly blows in the wind as they walk and it goes on like this a little further. So, but again, if you look at the video, it just looks like something that was generated. So when you look the, at the BBC documentaries that they have of clearly extinct animals, yes, they have generated those videos. But look at the difference between what the BBC very likely would spend on these kinds of documentaries of extinct animals. And then the ease with which you can just create a textual description of two or three sentences and then you get that video. Right? It's just mind-blowing to me. Let's look at another one. This one really not so much um, something like a prehistoric thing, but also something that is a really important category. So this one says drone view of waves crashing against the rugged cliffs along Big Sur's Garay Point Beach. The crashing blue waters create white tipped waves uh, going on, going on. But the main point here may be that this is like your typical stock footage. Right? It's something that you would see oftentimes used as backdrop or filler videos when people were saying certain things and you would like to have the shot, right? And people would need to create that. So you would have a drone pilot who's flying the drone at the right moment and coming up with an idea of how to do that. And all of that goes out of the window, right? With that video, you can now just say what kind of footage you want and then you have to wait for a little while and then you get it, right? If that is a subscription model, I have to say, right? I would totally buy that, of course, because it's nice to have nice imagery and stock imagery is really hard to find. Sometimes can also be really expensive because it's hard to create. But if we can create it that way, things will change a lot. And now look, let's look at one last example, which also I think is really interesting. And here that's not quite as realistic because that's more in an animated style. So what we have here is a animated scene features a close up of a short fluffy monster kneeling beside a melting red candle. The art style is 3D and realistic with a focus on lighting and texture, blah, 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 going on like this. And again, all the descriptions, all the prompts are a little longer than the ones that I read to you, but just two or three times as long. So it's, it's not a lot of text. I'll link everything from below so that you can check out these examples. There are also a couple more if you go to the research 
um, paper that OpenAI has published. And there are some interesting things there as well to look at. So this year is the last example I'm going to show you. This shows a little bit how things progress over time. So when we look at those three videos, what's interesting is that you can see how the video gets more and more refined over time. So this is taken from different stages of the transformer process that, that Sora is using. And as you can tell on the, on the left-hand side, it it's look, looks like a video from a nightmare right? where nothing really fits together. And then in the middle, it already looks pretty nice, right? Everything is a little um, blurry, but it looks pretty realistic. On the right-hand side, it actually looks very nice, even though if you look closely, there are some weird things there as well with the hand suddenly holding something that it didn't hold before, but anyway. So if you wanna see more examples, go and check out the OpenAI page and their research paper. In terms of how you can use it right now, you cannot, it's not openly available. It's available to um, the red team, meaning that there are people trying to misuse it so that they better understand what possible misuses look like. Um, I don't think it's very hard to think of many piss uses that are possible, so that should be an easy one. So it's available to those and then also a very small, probably selected group of content creators who probably would also help OpenAI to better understand how to use this kind of model to create content, for example, in, in the same way as you would use stock footage. So this, I, I think, really is a really important moment in video time, so to speak. I mean, I'll, I'll keep making videos, but I'll think about making videos differently from now on because it has really changed. And with these new videos coming along, which are very close to perfect, they have no sound though. So that's missing. They have no sound, but I'm sure that's gonna change as well. But with seeing where this is now, it's very easy to imagine that a year or two from now, all the differences will be completely eliminated and what you see is exactly what you, what you would expect. And at least from what we see right now, right, this already is more than good enough for stock footage. Right? So I think the stock footage market will really, really change. Um, and the rest of the video market will change as well, but hopefully at least people doing things will still remain in the picture. But yeah, the, the times are changing and I think this, this is a really important moment in time. So check out all the resources that I've linked there. It's really fascinating to watch and um, well, hope to see you again soon. Bye everybody.